All right, everybody, what's up? We're doing this. Welcome, guys. We're back in business. Things are good. <clears throat> gonna drop some good stuff today. Today, we're gonna talk about how to be a man. We're gonna talk about how to build masculine energy. Few updates. What's been going on in my life? Spent the last three weeks traveling, visiting some family in Idaho, a little camping trip. It was a lot of fun. Philly Cheese, what's up? Nate Dixon, Friedelin, Friedelin, Abu, what's up, guys? Yeah, visiting some family on the West Coast. Uh, spent some time studying with uh, Scott Meredith in Seattle, who was a gangster of Tai Chi. Damn, this guy, he's a skinny little guy. But we were doing Tai Chi push hands, you know, in this class. Um, he's demonstrating pushing with energy instead of your physical structure. No one can move this guy. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fairly strong. I'm pushing him as hard as I can. I'm putting everything into it. And he just like springs me back like it's nothing. It's, it's mind blowing. I'm not, I'm also not a great, you know, push hands practitioner, but there's something going on there. It's some cool stuff. I need someone to train with. That's the problem. If there's anyone in the Asheville area who wants to train Tai Chi push hands, hit me up. And with that, what else has been going on? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. I'm home. Just got home the other night. Flew in late. And uh, it's good to be back here in Asheville. So let's talk about how to build masculine energy. Uh, it's a very important topic in this world, which is lacking a lot of um, proper masculinity for men in my opinion. And well, let's just dive right into it. So I've been talking a lot about this nice guy syndrome. And, you know, just a, a recap of this, because it's such an important thing is that basically, a lot of us men in this day and age, we learned certain patterns of basically using niceness, like acting nice as a way to get the things that we want. And it's really a bit of a manipulative type of behavior. And when I talk about this stuff, it, it kind of triggers some guys and they start to say, oh, well, I don't think you should just be an asshole. And that's not really what it's about. There's a difference between being the nice guy, you know, nice guy syndrome and being a genuinely kind person. These are two different things. The difference here is that the nice guy is, he's just, he's acting nice. He just has this behavioral pattern, this unconscious, subconscious pattern of just smiling. Uh, even when something's pissing him off, he just smiles and says, oh, that's nice. <laughs> Be agreeing with everyone around him because he doesn't want to stand out or create conflict. That's what I'm talking about. And that's, that's not genuine kindness. That's just acting nice because you're afraid. It's a fear. It's a, it's, you know, it comes back to, being punished by your parents for basically, you know, being loud or, or expressing yourself a certain way. And it creates this constriction in your expression of yourself. You literally carry around these childhood patterns for your whole life, afraid to be who you are because you're afraid of the judgment of others. And there's, there's no reason for it really. It's, it's anyways, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about nice guy syndrome. It doesn't mean not being a kind person. That's a completely different thing. I think that kindness is a great virtue to have, but it's different than being a nice guy. So just to clarify that. So building masculine energy. First of all, I think one of the most important things is self-reliance. Being the director of your life taking full responsibility for everything that you're doing, making all of your own decisions, setting your own direction in your life. And a lot of people, a lot of men have difficulty with this. They can't make their own decisions. They're always asking, well, what should I do? What should I do? Especially if you're asking, you know, if you're a man in a relationship with a woman and you're always asking, well, what should I do? What should I do? Where should we go out to dinner? What, you know, it's very, it's not a very masculine quality. Women want structure. They want decisiveness because if you can't make the decisions, that puts her in a position where she has to now take control of the wheel and be in the more masculine state and that kills polarity, right? So setting your own direction in life, deciding, okay, where am I going? What am I doing? Making your decisions. Get good at making decisions and sticking to them. 
And don't be so influenced. Don't be easily influenced by everyone's opinions around you. Because when when the, the little, you know, oh, this person said this, therefore it must be true. Now I have to do that. You have no spine. You have no center. And you're always going to be others, other people's opinions and viewpoints are always going to land on you. And you're never going to have true integrity within yourself. So just something to be aware of there, right? The most important thing for a man is to have a mission, your mission, your purpose in life. What are you here to do? What are you working towards every day? What are you doing with your life? If you put other, I think one of the most masculine qualities is your purpose and your life mission is your biggest priority. Everything else is secondary to that. And a common pattern that that men have is to put other things first. I mean, a lot of men have they have zero mission. They they're totally disconnected from their purpose. That's why so many people feel depressed. They have anxiety. They have depression. They have drug addiction. They're jerking off to porn every day because they don't have any purpose. Because they haven't created a purpose for themselves. They are not on any mission. They're just literally getting through day by day, just numbing themselves to not face the things that they're feeling. Why are you usually feeling like this deep? dissatisfaction with life. You're working at a job that you hate. You're in a relationship that's actually not very beneficial for you because you're not on your mission. You're not on your purpose. You're fucking around, wasting your time, wasting your energy, doing shit that really doesn't matter. The important thing here is to think about this. Imagine you're dying right now. You're going to die in five minutes and you're looking back on your life and you're saying, oh, I'm sure glad I spent my time, you know, doing what I've done with my life. Would you be happy or would you say, shit, I've been completely wasting my time? Because nothing, you know, there's not much here that you can take with you. So it's about what are you leaving behind? What have you done? What have you accomplished? Have you accomplished your mission, your purpose? It's it's always something to think about. And so again, a man whose mission is above, above all else is very attractive to women. And what a lot of men do when they're, and I, I had this pattern myself in my early 20s where I was in this kind of desperate, lonely stage of like, oh, I had been through a rough breakup. And instead of really facing my shit, facing like, why do I feel, you know, the underlying pain and, and, and depression I was feeling, instead of going to the roots of it, it was like, well, I just need a new relationship. I need a woman in my life that will solve everything. So I was like putting all of my, emotional focus all of my energy into like i need to meet someone i need to meet someone and it was a fucking waste so much energy so much time so much focus that i could have been doing a lot of other things where i was just like just obsessed with like oh, i need a relationship i need i just need my soulmate you know my twin flame <laughs> um <clears throat> and it and how on a, basically when a man is in that state where he's like i just need to be with someone and that's what your purpose is right now it's it has this energy of being very needy, very obsessive. And in the long term, most women don't find that very attractive. When you're in your mission, when you're working towards that, like, okay, you're secondary, baby. I got to go fucking, you know, fight the gladiators in the Coliseum. Obviously not, but you know what I'm saying? Something big. I have this big mission, you know? So what I encourage you to do, if you don't already, if it's not already very clear to you what your mission is in life, what your purpose is, and that will change time to time. But there should be something bigger that you're working towards as a man. And if and when you have that, when you have that mission, when you have that purpose, now you basically, I mean, fitting into the path of like internal energy cultivation, now you have something to do with this energy you're cultivating. Uh, practicing semen retention, now you have something to put that sexual energy into. This is something I always tell men. They're like, well, I practice semen retention, but I just get really stuck. It just overwhelms me. It's too much arousal. It's too much energy. It's like, bro, you clearly don't have something big enough to put this energy into. Big fucking creative outlets, big projects, your work, your career, you know, you got to think bigger. So it's time, my friends. It's time to get very clear on what are your gifts? What are your skills? What are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? And how can you put that out there into the world to help clean up some of the fuckery that the planet is right now? Let's face it, you know? And, you know, I'm doing my best. I feel that my mission is to basically bring 
the joy and the bliss of the higher realms into this physical body and fucking party on this planet, baby, and help other men do the same. And you know, a big part of that is working with your sexual energy, having tantric sex. Oh, it feels good. Oh, it feeds the soul. And that's not just, you know, you're having like numb, drunk, casual sex with a stranger. That's not fulfilling. It fucking drains you. Jerking off to porn every day, it drains you. No, I'm talking about deep intertwining, activating your sexual, creative energy, your heart energy, your animalistic passion, connecting with that, even on your own. It's a wonderful experience. With a partner, oof, oof. That's when you birth something new. That's when you create healing. You create insights, epiphanies. That's what the work is really about. And that's why I'm so passionate about doing this because people are fucked up. They're, they're sexually extremely fucked up on this planet. And I, I think it's systematically designed to be that way. And that's all right. It's another test, we'll say. But when we humans clean up our, our sexual experience a little bit, bring it to a little bit more of a conscious level, we're going to experience dramatic changes. And if that doesn't happen, you know, not much is going to change. So that's why I'm so passionate about this. All right. Um, where are we at? Let's, let's take a sip of the old. I'm drinking some reishi mushroom tea today. I, I harvested these bad boys myself from the Blue Ridge Mountains here in Asheville. The mushroom of spiritual immortality. Bing Chi. <sighs> Building masculine energy. Another component of this is to develop your presence, develop your, your ability to penetrate a space. To pen first of all, the first thing is being in your body. A lot of guys aren't even on, in their body. They're up here in their head. They're thinking. They're, they're feeling too much. They're getting lost in emotional trips. Get back into your body. <clears throat> and how do you do that? Developing presence. Very valuable practices for this are qigong and yoga weight training meditation breath work all these things help you to train your mind your body and your energy as well and so it's important I mean, here's the thing presence when you're interacting with people Stry, strong eye contact, having strong focus, feeling like you're here, connecting with them. And this is becoming more and more of a challenge in our current world because people are staring at screens all day. We're used to like, okay, this and this and then this, like scroll, okay, that's, oh, uh, that's funny video, hit a like, oh, what's the next thing? Oh, here's a naked woman bent over, that's nice. What's the next, you know what I mean? What is it programming our brain to do? Be very fucking scattered. That's why I'm a big advocate of like, you know, Spending a little less time on the screen. I personally delete my social media apps when I'm not like creating content on them. I just I just can't anymore, guys. I can't. I, I don't do the scrolling thing anymore. I can't do it anymore. Fucks up your brain, destroys your presence, destroys your, your focus, your concentration, hijacks your dopamine circuit. It turns you into an addict, a zombie. I don't want that personally. Life was a lot better when it's just like, oh, we're, we're out, in the, out in the park meeting up with friends throwing a frisbee around. And I was like, oh, what are you guys doing Friday? I don't know. Call me later. You know what I mean? Now it's just like fucking, it's, 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 it's very interesting how much this has changed, right? Our social dynamic. But coming back to what I was talking about here, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> Your presence. Um, <clears throat> having real connection when you're interacting with a person. And again, this is something a lot of men struggle with when they're dating is having presence. They get very nervous. They get in their head. They're very scattered. When a man is nervous and, and in that fight or flight response, his breathing becomes shallow. His body tenses up. His thoughts start to race. He's occupying the space of his mind. It causes your energy field to contract, to shrink up, and your presence drops. That person doesn't feel you anymore. They're, you're actually starting to like pull energy in from them because you're now in a yin state of this, this internal over focus on yourself and oh what am i what are they thinking about me and it, it causes this contraction in your energy field and starts to pull the energy in that doesn't feel attractive so learning to breathe deeply 
it's not to say you're never going to feel like nervous. It's but it's how do you react to external stressors? This is why Zhang Zhuang, Qigong standing postures are such a valuable training because you learn to hold your body amidst external stress, which in that situation is just holding a posture for you know 30 minutes to an hour. It's pretty intense, but you don't cave in. You don't contract. You you just fucking keep going, like surrender into it as much as you can, right? And so you don't let the the anxiousness the nervousness drive you into that fight or flight state of panic and withdrawal you breathe through it you relax through it you sink into your structure into the earth straight spine elevated crown of the head your energetic structure is aligned your chi is flowing freely you relax and settle into your root whether you're sitting on a chair on your feet sinking your chi into the ground which simultaneously causes an expansion of your energy field. Now your field is expanded. Alexander says, hey, bro, I thought I'd seen you here in Hawaii. Uh, unless it was early last year. I haven't, that's the last time I've been in Hawaii. was February 2022. So when you sink, relax, breathe, boom, it inflates your energy field. Boom, you fill the room. It's one of the keys. And so developing that practice of holding yourself in that way, it gets you out of your head because instead of thinking about the thoughts that are stressing you out and going deeper down this rabbit hole of worry and fear and anxiety, you know, again, whether you're having a difficult conversation with someone, you're dating on a first date, and you're nervous, you're you know, in, a, in a physical confrontation, whatever it is, when you have this, this, you're able to engage yourself in this way, you have much more presence, you have much more focus, you're much more cool less reactive and more responsive. Like, okay, how do I choose to respond to the situation? So train yourself to hold your energy in a grounded, contained way. This is why Qigong is such a valuable, valuable practice on many levels, yoga, meditation, breath work, weight training as well. All great things for this. Do something difficult every day. This is a very powerful way to build your masculine energy. Coming back to what I was talking about, about everyone just being so distracted by social media and, and electronic devices now. A lot of men are basically, basically the things that they're doing throughout the day are just instant gratification habits, like scrolling through social media, like playing video games, like looking at porn, taking drugs, getting high, eating foods, like you know, eating junk foods that taste good, give you a little dopamine hit and you feel like shit. All these things are instant gratification habits. And this kills your discipline. It kills your ability to basically act for yourself. One of the keys to overcoming enslavement, because I, I it's, it's no big secret. I mean, okay. <laughs> To escape the matrix, one of the big keys is to get out of these instant gratification habits. They're keeping you locked in, controlling your mind. Oh, click on this. Look at these. I keep something to share here. I keep my phone, my iPhone on uh, grayscale, so it's black and white. So I open it up. It's it's, it's fucking boring. And I've been doing this for a long time now. And like some, you know, occasionally if I'm like editing a video or something, I'll turn it off so I can see clearly. And immediately it's like, holy shit, like look at all these colors. They're so vibrant and lush. And it's like, you just like, oh, it's so beautiful. You know, you just want to like stare at the screen. The, the downside of our technology, it can enslave us. And so, you know, little hack, I keep my phone on grayscale. It's really fucking boring. I spend minimal time on it. And so basically, yeah, <laughs> Being stuck in these instant gratification habits makes you lazy. It makes you always want to take the easy way out of things. And if you want to get anywhere in life, you have to work hard. You have to face your fears. You have to do things that are uncomfortable. If you want to be a man, a true masculine, strong man, you have to start facing, doing something uncomfortable. It's the only way you're going to get anywhere in your life. And you can start small. Some 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 good training tools for this are ice baths. No no one really wants to jump in an ice bath, you know. But like, it's 
any of anything where it's like you don't look forward necessarily to, do, to doing the thing, but like the feeling of having done it afterwards, that's a good sign. That's something good. That that means you're facing a discomfort, and it's the opposite of instant gratification. It's delayed gratification. When you're doing the thing, you're like, "Fuck, I don't know, man. This is intense." But afterwards, like, fuck yeah, I did that. I did that. It was uncomfortable. I didn't want to do it, but I fucking did it anyway. And you know what? It gets easier to do things like that now. It gets easier to do things you don't want to do, which is the only way you grow is to get the fuck out of your comfort zone. It's keeping you exactly where you're at, keeping you doing the same things day after day after day. And if you're, you're happy with that, you're comfortable with that, that's great stay where you're at. But me personally, I want to keep elevating. I want to keep growing. And, and I imagine most of you watching this are, are similar. So do something difficult every day. So other difficult things, um, I, you know, one of my daily practices, literally one of the first things I do in the day is, is Zhan Zhuang practices. I was talking about this earlier. It's Qigong standing meditation where you hold these postures for, uh, you know, initially even 10, 15 minutes, but you work up to 30 minutes or an hour. It's difficult. It's very difficult. It's psychologically difficult. You're just fucking standing there. It's it's easy to like your mind for your mind to race. So you have to train yourself to just just be, just be. You're you you have your hands up here for ten minutes. Your shoulders start to burn. It's discomfort. It'd be easy just to take them back. Like okay, fuck this. But no, you stick through it. You keep going. That's a training that will will put some hair on your chest, boy. Put some hair on your nuts. <laughs> Zhang Zhuang. Ice baths. I think weight training is excellent training as well. You know, it's difficult. Any anything, anything that you don't want to do, start doing it. Start start uh, getting out of your comfort zone, basically. All right. Okay. And if the finally, well, okay. One other thing here, and this is really relevant. What I'm always talking about is a huge part, a huge part of building your masculine energy <clears throat> is cultivating your sexual energy. And as a man. Uh, of course, this means no more frequent ejaculation. It's not to say you can never, ever, ever ejaculate, you know, but it's about not excessively ejaculating, which, you know, if you're ejaculating multiple times a week, it's too much. You're releasing your vitality. You're releasing your, basically your masculine charge. And eventually it's going to dry you up. Eventually your testosterone is going to tank. Your gene, physical essence is dried up and you just feel kind of lifeless and like, nah, you know, you become more feminized. So stop frequently ejaculating, but do cultivate your sexual energy. This is the whole thing in sexual Kung Fu. It's not about stopping sex or even self-pleasure. No, you can, you can do it as much as you want. In fact, it actually greatly benefits you to do that. The thing is experiencing sexual pleasure and orgasm regularly, it makes you feel more creative. You feel healthier. You feel more energized, confident. Life is more enjoyable. When you're regularly experiencing sexual pleasure and orgasm, you feel great. Ah, that's, that's what our sexual experience is meant to be. It's meant to be this healing, inspiring, creative. It just, it's fucking juicy. It's juicy as fuck. Oh, feels good. And when you're not doing it, you just kind of lose your zest for life. But here's the thing. We must learn to do it properly. And this is what sexual kung fu is all about, baby. For a man, it means learning to have non-ejaculatory orgasms so that sex no longer drains your energy. Uh, it means learning how to develop your ejaculation control so you can fuck like a king for hours at a time and like what, nothing. What? What? I'll keep going. I don't care. That's that's how that's how it goes when you train in sexual kung fu. You can literally fuck for hours and like no big deal. You can keep going if you want because you're not ejaculating. You you know, and orgasm over and over, and that builds this boom. You're building up this masculine firepower of sexual energy because you're not just discharging it anymore. You're containing it. You're developing it. You're refining it through meditation, developing your spiritual. Uh, developing your energy body, your spiritual connection. <laughs> That's the path of the masters. That's the path of the sexual Kung Fu master. And that will turn you boys into men. Goddamn. Okay. I think that's, uh, I think I've yelled enough things. So 
go ahead and type your questions into the chat box. Let's get into some Q and A. One thing, one other thing I want to share here. Uh, if you want to be supported by a group of men looking to connect with other men and, and have some sort of like regular training that helps you get out of your comfort zone, keep developing yourself. I'm opening my men's circle, my masculine awakening men's online circle group, circle group. It sounds a little like circle jerk, doesn't it? It's not a circle jerk, but it's an online men's circle. And I'm going to be opening up to the public very soon. Uh, it's currently exclusive for men in my multi orgasmic man course, but I'm going to be opening up to anyone to join. So it's going to be basically like weekly trainings, transformational breath work, uh, guided Qigong. I'm, you guide everyone through an energy cultivation practice once a month, uh, do group coaching calls, zoning in on, on particular issues with people. So if you're interested in that, check out the wait list. There's a link in this YouTube video in the description. And I believe there's a link in my Instagram bio as well. It's the masculine awakening men's circle. It's, it's, uh, we just had our first call the other day, we did some trash transformational breath work with men from around the world. It's fantastic. All right. All right. What, uh, huh, multi, -org multi orgasmy sure, man, a bro in Europe. Uh, he says my gym mates laughed about Zhang Zhuang until they tried it with me. Weren't laughing much anymore then. Oh shit. Yeah. For sure. It's because it's like, oh, I could do this. Yeah. Okay. Can you do it for 30 minutes, bro? Yeah. Same, even more so, you know, I was, uh, training with Scott Meredith in Seattle and he comes from the school of kind of Jung Man Xing Tai Chi, specifically Ben, Benjamin Lowe's flavor of that. Uh, and his whole thing was holding Tai Chi postures, but you're, you know, you're super sunken into it. Like he's adjusting me to, I'm like, shit like now i feel the burn he's like he's like most people can't even hold this for three minutes and it's true like i, I can do you know it's it's fucking hard so that's 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 a good well ego destroyer but also discipline builders the static stance practices phenomenal but it's not even for the sake i mean what i mean it is it is a good benefit of the practice is it develops your willpower to just fucking keep going under tremendous discomfort and pain but that's not really the purpose of the practice they're tremendously powerful energy cultivation practices just phenomenal builds chi pressure like you wouldn't believe son it's amazing that practice changed my life i do it every every single day i do my zhan Zhuang, baby what what <clears throat> all right where do we begin there's lots of questions let's just dive in <clears throat> rafix d 96 says, how long does it take to get to full power after relapse and how long should you retain? Um, what kind of relapse are we talking here? You shoot up some crack cocaine. This man shot up some crack cocaine. Oh, shoot up like you. Anyways, <laughs> I know you're talking about ejaculating. I've never called it relapse, but I, I understand it's, it's, a, it's a certain vernacular people use in the context of this. I just don't like that word because I don't believe that like a, you know, a certain sexual experience should be like something you you shame yourself about. If you're gonna, if you're ejaculating, you fucking enjoy it. It's a beautiful thing. It gives life. But you know, it's it can be abused, obviously. Anyways, those of you who've been watching me for really, yeah, we fucking know. <laughs> uh, anyways, you've ejaculated. How long does it get to full power? I don't know. It depends. It's gonna be different for everyone. Depends how your hormones are. Depends how your gene is. If you're fucking depleted, it's gonna wipe you out for a while, like maybe a week. Till you or maybe two weeks when I first started practicing retention at the age of 24 it's been 10 years guys Whew. um it would 24 25 years old when I was you know I would ejaculate and if it, it would take about two weeks for me to get back to full power full power now I'm 10 years older I'm 34 and you know I I currently ejaculate about once a month during sex just you know I explained this before it, it's it's my optimal frequency it's especially as part of sexual kung fu, you're I'm drawing all this sexual energy every day from my genitals, and especially before if I'm going to ejaculate, I fucking draw that shit up for at least 20 minutes, then let it rip, and it's just like shooting out an empty seat. There's not much in there, and I don't feel so. Basically, I'm back to full power within a couple of days now. So it just it depends. I, I, I'm actually planning on making a video more about this, like basically what affects the refractory period after ejaculating, how you can shorten that, but basically maximizing your hormones, maximizing your energy cultivation is going to be a big key to that. <laughs> mm. 
Nathan Karoka saying, can you explain the correlation between the love and lust aspect of sexual energy and how to find balance between the two? Well, I'm glad you asked, Nathan. No, this is, this is a great, a very important point in that two powerful human experiences, love, lust, but these are often completely disconnected for a lot of us. And I think part of this is, is comes from our porn conditioning. We, we never really saw love through porn. Um, so basically for men, for a lot of people, this may be prominent for women as well, but you know, definitely, definitely a thing for men is that the sexual center and the heart center are disconnected. So love and lust are these two things that they may like, basically like a pendulum. It's one side or the other. So, and it's not to say here, I'm not saying like lust is wrong. Like people have say, oh, well, you should never have lustful experience. It's like, no, I like to have crazy animalist, animalistic passions, sex myself, you know, like I like to fuck my partner's brains out like a wild animal, but I like to bring the heart, you know, there has to be some element of heart energy there for me or else it's, it's never ultimately fulfilling. Like if you're just, just fucking your brains out every day and just ejaculating madly, just lust, it's, it, it never satisfies you. It never fulfills you. It always leaves you wanting more. There's no satisfaction. And that's what dries up men literally like a raisin <laughs> is over ejaculating. Lust is this heavy energy connected to the water element. Um, it's this, it, it's tied into the survival instinct, the, the will to keep em, embodiment, embodying, you know, water's about embodiment, survival. And so that it, it's linked to that. But when that's, again, when that's your only experience of sex, it's never fulfilling. Love is a very deep, fulfilling. Love is about connection. It's about completion. It's it's uh, you know true deep un unconditional love is arising from Yuanchi, what the Taoists call Yuanchi, original Qi, source energy, which is pure love. You know, I've been practicing Taoist internal alchemy for quite a while now, and recently I've had has a powerful breakthroughs in my practice where I'm experiencing the realm what they call Tai Yi. The oneness, which are, which further gave birth to these more polarized realms, the different heavens. You know, one is later heaven, which we embody, which we call the physical plane. But the source of all things is complete, unconditional love. And being in that space is fucking phenomenal. It's like a deep, orgasmic ocean of just everything's one thing. It's just like, it's a fucking love fest. It feels amazing. Anyways, that's where we come from, Right. So, so love is a powerful energy, but as, as a connection to the heart center, well, we're, we're really going places, aren't we? That's how it goes. It's, it's why I do these. It's fun. It brings out a different, we just never know what's going to come out of my mouth. You know what I'm saying? So basically <laughs> this is also a fire water dynamic here because the water element is that lustful energy, the genitals, the sexual energy. And again, it's this heavy energy. It wants to sink down. So when you're you, when you're driven purely by lust, you're always going to be driven towards ejaculation and ejaculatory orgasm. And if you don't ejaculate, you're going to feel very unsatisfied. <clears throat> this is why a lot of men, you know, practicing these sexual kung fu exercises, often feel unsatisfied to a certain extent from masturbation from solo cultivation because they're doing it in a heart disconnected way. I started looking at this. I'm like, what's the difference between making love to yourself and making love to a partner? And it was pretty obvious to me from my experience. I'm like, well, when I'm with a partner, I'm, I feel deep, deeply emotionally connected to them. There's love. Like there's an activated activation of my heart energy. Oh, of course. Versus often when I'm by my, you know, self-cultivating, it's just like lustful images and just like, ah, oh, fucking, you know, you know how we guys are. And there's not much heart in it. So I started bringing that into my practice. Like when I would practice self-stimulation, self-cultivation, I started focusing on, on just generating feelings of love, pure, just, ooh, ah, love, 
in my heart. And you know what? It made the experience much more orgasmic, much more embodied, contained, and much more fulfilling. Instead of feeling like, ah, I'm just fucking horny at the end, I felt like, ooh, I feel satisfied. I feel like I've made love to myself. And that's a wonderful thing. And so what's happening here, basically an important part of sexual kung fu practice is to reconnect the heart energy with the sexual energy. It becomes this alchemy between them. And what's happening energetically is the fire energy of the heart. You mix it with that thick, watery energy of lust, the sexual energy. So you're mixing love and lust together and it lightens the vibration of your sexual energy and it makes your, your sexual arousal much less volatile because instead of just this heavy lust that wants to dump out of your body in an ejaculation, it lightens it. Now that energy wants to move up in your body. It wants to elevate up to the crown. It wants to elevate up to the heart center. It's easy to run that shit through your microcosmic orbit when even when you're fucking going to town, going to plow town. Okay, so that's a big, a big key there. Uh, that I really had to discover on my own. And I started realizing, oh, whenever I'm like just focusing on sexual images, like really lustful, it it it's it kind of tends to put me, push me in the direction towards ejaculatory orgasm. Whereas when I'm in a state of just like, oh, connected to my heart energy, just pure feeling, just pure being, and uh, that kind of state, there's no ejaculation in sight. It's I'm not, I'm going in a completely different direction. So lust versus love. The connection between them. It's it's about both. It's about infusing love into your lust so you can fuck your partner's brains out and love them at the same time. And that is a very that's the human experience, you know, is woo. That's that's heaven and earth copulating, baby. That's some good shit. <clears throat> oh, oh yeah. I'm not gonna see that shit on Pornhub. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Where are we at? The argument against Darwinian evolutionary theory. Okay. Uh, someone asked in the group basically what I felt about how I felt about Darwinism. I was like, I think it's bullshit. I'm not gonna go on, I don't want to waste, you know, this is I mean, I mean it's 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 nothing's too irrelevant in these these kind of you know impromptu fucking rants that I do, but I uh, I'll share a little perspective on Darwinis, Dar Darwinism. Um, I think it's bullshit because. It's a limited pers it's a very polarized perspective on basically all of reality, all of the universe, of which our planet and our ecosystem is a microcosm. It's a microcosm of the entire universal process. Here's the thing: we're all cells in an organism. The, the whole Darwinian thing is survival of the fittest, basically, right? It's evolution. And and I believe in evolution, but uh, well, fucking okay. I'm just gonna say this. <laughs> You know, Jesus made it all is what it really was. Therefore, there can't be Darwinism. No, just kidding. <laughs> but okay. Um, basically, it's a shift, it's a paradigm shift. When you see every Darwinism is coming from this perspective, everything is separate. Everything is separated. It's me against you, against them, against that. Every everything's a battle. I started noticing this in the past few years. Like sometimes I'd watch like uh, nature documentaries, you know, like National Geographic stuff. And what are they always focused on? They're always focused on like, how does this species possibly survive in such dangerous circumstances? It's always about like the battle, this fucking battle. Like they kill, they have to eat this thing and battle them. And it's, it's all about the conflict and battle because that's what we see. We're, we're so in this like separate state of consciousness, but like everything's a fucking battle. It's just a fucking struggle to survive. Damn nature, you scary, you know? But <laughs> that's a certain perspective, and that's what Darwinism is coming from. When you have a, uh, I don't know, like, not to say it's like a better perspective, but a, a different perspective is that everything is part of a whole. Oh, we're all one. Namaste. You know, but but it's true. It's true. We're all. It's not that we're all one, and obviously we have some differentiation, but we're all part of this unit. We're all cells in a microcosmic. Uh, we're all micro we're all cells and organism right we're all working together and and so basically nature is this cooperation it's it's when you when you look past the like surface level of like this wolf is fucking killing that deer that's brutal and you start to see more like waves of energy fields of energy 
the animals have a consciousness. They have like this herd mentality consciousness. I mean, you know, Native Americans medicine is, is working with like the spirit of the animals because they represent a certain elemental consciousness of the energy field of the earth. So they're another microcosm of a greater force. And you start to see more of as like, uh, speaking of which, there's a big bear walking through my yard right now. <laughs> How fitting. Crocky, he's going to look the size of that one. He's going to kill us for sure. Um, where was I? <laughs> Welcome to fucking National Geographic. I'm Jonathan White. Today we're talking about survival of the fittest. Where was I going with that? Good God. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Anyways, basically you start to see, <laughs> I said I wasn't going to rant on this, but here I am. Okay. But basically you start to see everything as it's, it's, it's a, it's a balance. It's, it's a balance of energy. Uh, nature without human intervention is perfect. <laughs> well, not without current human intervention, right? Um, it's a perfect system. Everything stays in balance. We see it as, oh, they're fucking killing each other, but it's, it's this, it's this energy exchange and circulation between them. Um, anyways, basically I don't think it's survival of the fittest. I, I think it's cooperation. It's, it's, it's just a manifestation a physical manifestation of deeper layers of, of, uh, energetics and anyways i think I've, I've i think you guys know what i'm getting at here i'm not a fucking evolutionary scientist i shouldn't be talking about these things but you asked so here we are come to my my lecture next week you know at fucking university anyways let's change subjects <laughs> neko's asking did you learn anything from joe dispenza yeah i mean you know i've read his books and stuff He's teaching grace. He's teaching yoga practice. He's teaching, you know, basic like yogic meditations, bringing the energy up the spine and he's putting scientific terms on it, which is really cool. It's cool. Yeah. It was great stuff. I mean, he's doing stuff on a massive scale for sure. It's great. Sebastian R says, could you recommend a book for premature ejaculation, microcosmic orbit? Well, a book for microcosmic orbit, um, <clears throat> Montauk Chia's Awaken Healing Energy Through the Tao is a great one, kind of classic on the microcosmic orbit. Yang Juing Ming has a book, uh, Small Heavenly Circulation, Qigong. It's Qigong Meditation, Small Heavenly Circulation. That's a really great one on the microcosmic orbit as well. A book for premature ejaculation, um, you know, for my current understandings of premature ejaculation, I haven't seen a good book on the subject. I'm actually, I'm writing one myself though. I've been working on my book. Um, I'm, I've, I started it a year ago. Then, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fucking work to write a book. I don't know if you've ever written a book. It's a lot, but anyways, what I'm doing now is like, okay, I need to write 10 minutes a day, write for at least 10 minutes a day. And I'll have this, I'll have this damn thing done hopefully by the end of the year. So I've got it. It's, this is the thing. There's, there's a lot of books on like male sexual stuff, but like, they're all the same thing over and over again. It's the same fucking shit. Like do fucking Kegels at the point of return, just squeeze your fucking Kegel. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's great. You know, I haven't heard that 10 million times there. It's just the same shit over and over again, but my book's going to be different. I'm pretty excited to get it out there. It's going to take a little bit, but Ooh, Ooh, it's going to be good. It's not going to be the same as all the other fucking books that are just copy and paste, copy and paste. Yeah. Uh, Ramesha, Ramesha, Rem. 21 says, do you have a video for the standing Qigong? Yes. If you go on my YouTube channel or just look up sexual Kung Fu, uh, standing meditation Qigong or Zhan Zhuang Qigong, Z-H-A-N-Z-H-U-A-N-G. I got to practice on there. Mabu says, can you go after lust and still practice sexual Kung Fu? And if not, are we 
not missing lust out. Um, and I basically was talking about this. The whole thing is like, it's fine. Lust. I mean, it's an, you're not going to fuel probably sexual arousal without lust because ultimately that's, that's a huge part of it. My point being that if there's not a degree of love mixed in with it, it gets out of balance and it's unfulfilling. And, and it's not to say you can't just have like fucking crazy lustful sex sometimes, like, you know, sometimes, but, but my point being that if that's your only, if it's 100% lust, it's going to be very unfulfilling and draining after a while, you know, uh, that's my point, but love and lust, you know, find the balance between these two things, basically. Okay, M. MP Chied Chied says, "Do you have any tips on leading in sex without being goal or ending oriented? I'm trying to just create the space for connection and be open to sensations, but end a little less directional without having an end goal." Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good question. Basically, leading in sex, it shouldn't be like, uh, yeah, you don't want to be like goal oriented. Like, well, this is how it all has to go. Like, it has to end with you having an orgasm and me having an orgasm. Like not goal oriented in that way, but like, it's more of an in the moment, like, okay, like what's going to be next. It, part of it, I think comes from being able to read your partner as a, as a man in sex with a woman, you want to be really penetrating your partner with your awareness, feeling what, you know, well, just, 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 yeah. Penetrating them with awareness. And when you're doing that, you, it, it becomes really obvious to you, like how they're reacting and like when they want more, when they want something different, Etc. So it's just a practice of it's, it's really a dance. You know, it's like, maybe we need a new position now. Maybe I like touch her here now. Maybe I, um, you know, massage her back. Cause I'm giving it to her from behind, baby, whatever, you know, just be playful with it. And, um, just knowing like where it's going next, keeping it fresh. Uh, it's, is, you know, hopefully that, that helps, but basically it's being when you're in the moment, then you can, very much lead because you naturally feel like, oh, I feel like, I feel like this next. I feel like that next. And rather than like, well, will this bring us to an orgasm? And of course that's a natural part of it, but yeah. Lex Lieberman from Medellin. Thank you, brother. Swift Garces says, what happens internally on day 74 of semen retention? Um, it's not really like, I've seen people that like put out these timelines, like on day 21 of semen retention, this happens on day 30. It's, it's a bunch of bullshit. Like I say this having, I've been doing semen retention for 10 years and I can say like, and uh, after, you know, four or five years of doing it, when my hormone system really like rebalanced, I kind of rebuilt my gene it was pretty much like homeostasis. It's like, okay, this is just like how my system is now. And like, it's, uh, yeah, it's not like you ejaculate. No, now you're back at 0% energy. Day 21, you're this on day 74. All of a sudden your fucking pineal gland activates. Like I've seen people say like, oh yeah, practicing semen retention will just give you complete spiritual enlightenment all on its own. It's a bunch of bullshit. It's you, semen retention. You're just stopping a leak. So your endocrine system can build back up. Your energy can build back up. That's what's happening. So that's what's happening internally on day 74 is your, your body's just readjusting. And obviously I'm a huge proponent of semen retention. It's a phenomenal practice. I think every man should do, but, um, a lot of men kind of give it more overemphasis on like, you know, it's going to fix everything for you. For me, semen retention is just, it's just one thing. It's one thing amongst many other things that I'm doing that are contributing to my vitality, to my energy, to my creativity. So it's just one piece of the cultivation puzzle. Jaramara says, tell us more about your psychedelic trip, please. Which one? 
<laughs> I used to do a lot of psychedelics in my earlier years. I don't do that shit no more, but I dabbled. But man, I, I get much higher on meditation Qigong now than I ever did on psychedelics. Like fucking, whew, like recently. It's a powerful shit, baby. But you have to work for it. It takes years to develop it instead of you just take a fucking drug and ooh, and then it's gone and like, oh shit, well, I got to take more drugs. No, then it's through meditation, through internal cultivation, you stabilize these higher states. Sustain it. Nathan is asking, I noticed when I do a certain technique during solo cultivation, I feel a huge surge of energy through my body. It often becomes overwhelming. What would you recommend to hold the state for longer? Well, the first thing is don't get attached to the states, you know, because it becomes the whole thing of like chasing after an orgasm. Like I have to make this certain thing happen. It becomes a contrivance. You, you, you can't force these things to be sustained. You can experiment with it. Of course you can say, Hey, maybe if I do this and this and that, but generally the more powerful and like kind of sudden something like that is where all of a sudden it's just like a oh, fuck type thing. Usually the less sustainable it is. It's more of a peak type thing. I'm not saying it's necessarily like a peak orgasm, but just what I've noticed is generally the more like it's just like a fucking, you know, semi truck hitting you all of a sudden. It's it they tend to be more fleeting experiences. Whereas like when it's more of a slow building wash and like, oh, fuck, I'm here. Whoa. You know, that's that's more of like sustaining it. Um, but this I mean, this it's 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 different every time. You know, I haven't like you know, I'm multi-orgasmic. I'm having multiple orgasms during my sexual experiences, but it's still like, I can't quite control them because it's, it's, it's different than the ejaculatory orgasm. You always kind of know what's going to happen with that one, but these energetic orgasms, it just depends like how open you are on that day, what channels are open, kind of where is your energy centered? You know, where's, is your heart open? Is your, your crown open? You're going to blast off into a cosmic orgasm. You just, never, I just never fucking know. And you know what? Um, and, and I kind of had a similar mind state for a while. I was like, well, how do I really like make this happen? Cause we want to be able to just control everything and, and do it at will. But I think for me now, it's just kind of part of the magic is like, it's always going to be different and I never know what's going to happen. You know, like, like, uh, last week, my partner and I were having, like, <laughs> we were going to sleep. I was tired as shit. And then all of a sudden, like we started having crazy, amazing sex and like fucking cosmic orgasms. Like, oh shit. Like I didn't see that coming. I was just, I just wanted to go to sleep. You know what I mean? And so, um, and something else I'll share is when I was learning this, when I, when I was first getting, you know, pretty good at this sexual Kung Fu practice, I would have like these powerful non-ejaculatory orgasms. But then the next session, I wouldn't have such a powerful non-ejaculatory orgasm. Like, oh, I'm failing. I'm not as good at this. But um, what I realized is, again, things are just different every day. It's just, you can't, you can't hold on to and try to grab onto these states. That's part of the beauty of them. You know, it's like the most enjoyable, beautiful things are the things that are fleeting, you know, like the, like the, the plum tree blossom that blossoms a few days out of the year. It's that, that fleeting experience is much more beautiful. So when you accept this, you're able to accept that, you know, just allow things to be as they are, just allow what is. And my whole, th you know, interesting, interestingly now, I have zero intention of orgasming when I have sex, when I even self pleasure, there's zero intention of orgasm. I I've completely lost attachment to, um, definitely ejaculatory orgasm, but even just orgasm in general, of course, my experience of orgasm is so broad now, like I consider just being in a pleasurable state, an orgasm. So it's like I, the more detached you come from this, the more liberated you become and, and almost contradictingly, the more intense your sexual experience becomes, because instead of focusing all this energy and intention, like, well, I need to make this happen instead of like contriving something, you're just totally there, totally present and receptive. And it can be so much more powerful. And just a little, you know, thing to share with you guys, if you, what I'm talking about is it's a bit more of an advanced level of work. And this is ultimately where the path of sexual Kung Fu leads. But if you want to, you know, if you're like, well, how do I, how do I start experiencing this, Jonathan? Like, where, where do I, what is the training to do this? You know, this is what my courses are for. Um, the first starting point, if you're, if you're super new to all this stuff, start with my sexual Kung Fu workout. It's a really simple daily routine. You can use it. will 
build your sexual power and help you start to circulate sexual energy through your body. If you're ready for like a full on training, but still kind of a beginner level, uh, my male sexual mastery course is a really good introductory program to the sexual Kung Fu exercises. And then if you're like, I want the advanced full on 100% deep dive, that's the multi-orgasmic man 12 week course. So just, you know, how, how to, to get into this stuff, have to dive into this, get training, get the, get the ball rolling, my friends. Well, Avi says, you say orgasm a lot. What feels like an orgasm, but actually isn't? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Because my definition of orgasm is, I consider an orgasm to be a pleasurable sensation in the body that is kind of outside your normal day-to-day -day experience. That's my definition of an orgasm. And that is I, an important um, perspective to have when coming into this work as a man learning to be multi-orgasmic because, because of porn conditioning, our experience of sex and orgasms become extremely limited, extremely constricted. So when you can break that mold, when you, you can, it, it's a process. That's why I have, you know, a 12 week course of like deep mind body exercises to help you completely rewire your system. Then you open up to this whole, I mean, God damn, most men, I'd say like 98% of men on this planet, they're experiencing like a a one one hundredth of the sexual pleasure that they could be experiencing, and this is what the, this work unlocks. So that's what's up. Oh, lose my legs here. Yeah. Martin, Martin Smith's fitness says, do you run or do any cardio for at least 40 minutes? And if so, do you feel an increase in energy after? Um, I've kind of gone, gone up and down in my cardio training. Um, I was, I was hardcore cardio last year and, um, um, whereas this year I'm doing, I mean, I'm still doing cardio. Just, I don't do like more intense cardio. My cardio has been walking and well, specifically and Bagua. Bagujang walking, which is phenomenal, but I don't do hard cardio anymore. I found that it kind of was elevating my cortisol levels a little bit. I would feel really kind of like anxious the rest of the day. When I stopped doing it, that cut out, I was sleeping better. So I'm like, huh? Okay. And now, uh, and that's not like a, like, that's something that may, there's probably other factors and things like that. But, um, I prefer, I now prefer more gentle cardio than like intense, like running and things like that. But it's, it's going to change. Like, I'll, I bet I'll be doing more soon. You know, it's just, it's, it's always changing for me. I think the cardio exercise is important and it can be very beneficial, but uh, I don't think it's like a be all exercise by any means. I get more energy from Qigong. Absolutely. Jackson says, how can I increase my shin energy? Meditate, practice spiritual connection, connect with the stars. Um, <clears throat> you can focus on the upper center, the upper dantian. I, I have a video on YouTube. Look up sexual kung fu, pineal gland breathing. That will help activate this area. Martin is asking, yo, bro, some people say ejaculation relieves tension and stress and they also prevent, and it also prevents prostate cancer. I'm not sure if it's true. Okay. It does release tension and stress. I mean, this is the whole thing is ejaculation is a release of built up sexual tension and pressure in the genital region. So that's why you feel like, oh, fuck, thank God after, <laughs> after ejaculating. But the problem is that overdoing it dries up your hormones. It's like, if you're using ejaculation as stress relief is like, how, what to compare this to? I mean, it's like donating a kidney for stress relief. This is an exaggeration, but you know, but uh, 10 or 20 years of daily ejaculation, that's not an exaggeration. It's going to fucking deplete your kidney energy. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's true. But again, 
co- it's not very cost effective at releasing stress and tension in the long term. Having an occasional ejaculation, sure, that's fine. This whole thing is is my viewpoint is not like never ever ejaculate. Um, if you're 20 years old, you can get away with ejaculating once a week, and you'll be okay. But um, learning to release tension and stress without ejaculating is going to be a much better investment long term. And as far as preventing prostate cancer, I think that that's you know I don't think there's much truth in this. I think one as one aspect of avoiding like stagnant fluids in the prostate, I believe that is important. That's why I am an advocate of prostate massage and occasional ejaculations just to move get the get the fluids moving. Um, but at the same time, um, if ejaculation is the only thing you're doing to try to take care of your prostate, you're you know you're not doing that much. Prostate health which is very important because 50% or more of men end up with prostate ailments, uh, but it's, it's not that difficult to take care of your prostate. One of the biggest problems with, with prostate stuff is heavy metals. Um, what is it? Cadmium, which is a very common environmental toxin. It tends to accumulate in the prostate, and that may be one of the factors of prostate cancer. So heavy metal detox. Um, I think prostate massage is important for all men. Don't don't sit down all day. Avoid stagnance in this area. Boom. <clears throat> Civics 2K says, with strengthening my pelvic floor muscles by actually workouts, not squeezing it, and microcosmic orbit breathing, also strengthening pelvic muscles is... Okay, the, uh, I think your question is strengthening the pelvic muscles by like doing more uh, functional exercises like squats and things like that versus just doing Kegels. If that's what your question is, then yes, that is what I advocate. That's how I keep my pelvic floor heavy. I don't do Kegels. I have not done Kegels since, um, it's been two years, two years, no Kegels. And, um, my pelvic floor feels better than it ever has. I have complete ejaculation control very good sexual vitality, very, very powerful erections. My erections have been off the hook. Just, 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 just FYI, my erections have been rock solid, baby. I've been really, you know, I've been maximizing my health and hormones. I'm doing a bunch of detox. I'll be sharing more about that soon, but uh, yeah, everything's good. So that's my approach. I think Kegels are a very specialized exercise that can be beneficial for some people, but for me, they created a lot of hypertension in my pelvic floor and I felt better once I stopped doing them. And uh, I, I uh, squats, lunges, that will build your pelvic floor in conjunction with the surrounding muscle groups, which is a much more holistic way of going about it. Jaramara says, semen retention will bring spiritual enlightenment, or at least immediate for me, it did, but I have to say I combined it with a lot of meditation. Well, there you go. So it wasn't just a semen retention. And that's the whole thing I'm sh- I'm saying is like, it's one thing. If you just do semen retention and like you keep living like an unconscious lifestyle, it's only going to do so much for you. Me, semen retention was a byproduct of my Qigong practice. I was, you know, my teachers were saying, hey, you shouldn't ejaculate too much. It'll waste your energy. I'm like, okay, I'll stop. Or at least I'll work towards that because <laughs> I was also learning the non-ejaculatory practices. So naturally I was like, oh, this feels better than ejaculating. So like, I don't think I'll do that anymore and meditation and everything. So yeah, yeah, of course. And that, that's my point is that you combine it with other things <clears throat> and now you have more energy to work with through your meditation, which you're refining. So you're refining that raw jing into, into shen, spiritual energy. Trust none says, do you do the horse dance? Um, yeah, I mean, I do. There's a, there's some practices I do that involve a horse dance, but I'm not like, like endurance standing in a horse dance. I used to do that for a while, but I, if I want to strengthen my legs, I like just like lifting weights. It's a lot quicker and more efficient. If Tech Naeem says, what do you do when you have nothing to do or no one to do things with, aka how do you spend a rest day without consuming things irresponsibly? That's a good question. Uh, for me, it's usually my weekends are are pretty chill. It's my like, okay, I'm freaking, 
I, I tend to go hard during the week. So I'm like, I'm ready to like, just have some quiet time on the weekend. I like to walk in nature. I love to go on walks in nature. Walking specifically can be a very powerful practice in itself of like, because I noticed my tendency in the past to just be like, just fucking thinking, getting lost in my head and thoughts while walking. And you're not fully, you're not getting the full benefit you could of a walk. It can be a practice, right? So what I do now is almost like Qigong walking. And sometimes I'm doing more like energy circulation things while I'm walking. But my favorite thing to do is to just, just how much presence can I have in the, in the moment as I'm walking? So I listen to the sounds, the birds, the wind in the trees, like almost like you were listening to an interesting piece of music, just really focus on that. And that brings you strongly into the present moment. And I just focus on like lowering my breath into my belly, really just like melting tension and just like, you know, slow down a little bit. So I'm, I'm very centered and it starts to feel like instead of I'm like moving around on the earth, it starts to feel like I'm just standing in place, moving my legs. And I'm like pulling the whole planet like a treadmill. It's feeling very, very centered. So I like walking, reading books, just, you know, meditating, doing Qigong, just chilling, you know, laying in the grass, watch the trees go by nature time, baby. play a musical instrument. Ravi Arya says, I do asana. I feel a lot of sexual desire at times, but it goes away after a glimpse. How can it remain continuously all day long? Okay, my perspective on this is that you don't want your sexual desire to go away. If you have zero sex, sexual desire, zero sex drive, it usually means your hormones are low, your low testosterone. And I know that that's kind of a common thing in like the, the brahmacharya, the yoga thing is like, you should have no sex drive. You should have no sexual thoughts. I personally think that aspects of that are bullshit personally, because it's like your sex drive, your sexual desire, it's a driving force you want to work with. So the thing is, is you have to be comfortable, first of all, with feeling that, oh, ooh, ooh, you know, that, that energy of desire. And then you have to allow it to, you have to redirect it into other things. Like I feel horny. What if I play a musical instrument, write a piece of music? What's going to come out then? What if I go outside and you know go to the gym, do a workout? What if I put it into something? This is the whole path of sexual Kung Fu. It's not about suppressing. I've never said you should never have sexual desire. No, it's but it's it's about when that sexual desire leads you to waste that energy, to ejaculate impulsively to porn or just, you know, meaningless sex, you've lost something. That's the problem. So sexual desire isn't the problem. It's being controlled by it to do negative things. So when you practice sexual Kung Fu in a way that you now channel that energy into positive things, the sexual desire is a fuel. It's a different perspective, but it's, it's, it's what's worked the best for me personally. Lex Lieberman says it's understood that all of it's understood that all the dopamine we have been releasing for years and our brain has become habituated in some way like a drug in the same way do you think that this should be gradual and allow yourself to leave these habits periodically or do you think that it should be blunt and leave everything like right away wouldn't that be somewhat counterproductive due, due to neurobiological issues So basically the question here is if you have a lot of like instant gratification habits, like should you really just like cut them all and walk away or like kind of slowly like, okay, maybe I'm jerking off to porn every day. Well, maybe I only jerk off to porn uh, every three days. I don't know. My, here's my perspective on this, how I did this. And of course this was back in 2013, 2014 where there was social media and stuff, but it's, it wasn't nearly as like intense and like attention sucking as it, as it is now. So I had that in my favor, I suppose. Plus at the time I'd gotten rid of my smartphone. I had a flip phone. I was living very minimal lifestyle. So, um, and it all is part of my journey, you know, to, to support. I mean, if I was doing it now, I think the biggest thing is, is really the, the, the biggest things for people that are fucking up their brain, their dopamine, habits or everything on a phone, everything on a smartphone, on a computer. And to me, it's like, you might as well just fucking cut the thing off. Like 
Go for a camping trip for three days, somewhere where there's no service. You can't, you know, even if you have a phone, you can't do anything on it or just like lock it in, give it to a friend and say, hide this for me for, for three days. You know, I went camping for six days last uh, a couple of weeks ago, no phone, nothing. And I mean, I've, I've been pretty minimal with my time anyway, but it just, it feels a lot more focus and cl and like presence and like, yeah, the first day or two, you're just like, oh fuck, I'm bored. What am I going to do? But I don't know. To me, it's like, you might as well just rip the fucking bandaid off. Just go for it. But even like, even one day without using screens, you'll be surprised at how much it increases your focus and just, just your, your presence in the moment. Simon says, do you have experience being sexual on psychedelics? <laughs> yes, I do. And uh, it's interesting. It's It can be really fucking weird too, but very powerful as well. But to be honest, the sex I'm having now, tantric sex is 10 times anything I experienced on psychedelics. I mean, it feels very psychedelic. I think you're releasing probably chemicals in the brain. So, something's happening because I get to the same space with tantric sex. It doesn't happen every time, but when it does happen, it's fucking intense go to hyperspace and i'm like in the 10th dimension there's like all the fucking other beings there like what the fuck like it gets weird you know it's, that's why i say you don't need drugs when you do this stuff you just have to practice hard Nathan Kairoka says, what are the next steps, your own development? What are you working towards in regards to this type of work? Well, what I'm working to right now, what I'm working in, <laughs> what I'm working on right now, as far as my practice, um, you know, one of my big focuses recently has been Taoist internal alchemy, Nadon. Like, how do I connect to the energy body of the cosmos? How do I go back to like the source that I came from? and and bring that energy into this body i've been working on it and you know what i'm having some pretty profound experiences um that's that's stuff that i'm working on of course i'm always working on my uh um my tai chi i'm not great at tai chi but it's it's a hobby it's fun it's cool how much can i sink the chi how how much chi pressure can i blast through my body you know my qigong bagua has been a big focal point as well xing Chuan, uh some mantis stuff too some mantis nagong system i've been i've been uh, studying, uh, you know, this is my practice. There's always things I'm working on. Um, and, and of course, much of the things I'm sharing today, I'm still working on like my, um, uh, just being a better man in my relationship, in my business, in, you know, as, as, as a man sharing this work to, to, to all you guys, you know, I'm just, I'm always working on things, uh, always accepting that I have weaknesses and, um, a lot of room for growth. I'm nowhere near like a level of mastery. I, I feel like with anything in my life. And so I'm always just, just pushing harder and harder and harder, uh, going deeper into things. <clears throat> Adam says, what would happen if I do semen retention permanently? I mean, that was my mindset starting this. I was like, okay, I'm never ejaculating again. And then, you know, fucking six, eight weeks, I'd have a wet dream. I was like, shit, all right, well, I guess my body thought otherwise. Uh, and after years of that, I was like, okay, well, and and when I could go like really fucking long times, I was like, oh, I'm actually like losing benefits. Like, huh. And what I ultimately realized was like, there's a balance between, uh, and the Taoist, a lot, most of the Taoist classical uh, sexual texts talk about there being a balance between ejaculating too much being harmful, but also going too long could actually be harmful. And I think that what happens is your endocrine system atrophies a bit. It's like, oh, he's not using this. Cut it out. <laughs> and so, you know, this is my theory, but but I experimented with it directly. And what I found is if I go too long, I lose benefits. And obviously if I ejaculate every day, I don't feel good. So it's like, instead of it, well, because I had this mindset of like, well, I have to go long time, man. Gotta go years that's cool you know whatever i was like okay just fucking listen to my body this is what works the best for me as well so having said that i don't know if you do see an attention permanently you'll probably ejaculate eventually whether it's a wet dream or you like you accidentally unless you like you know you're not having sex you're 
not you're, you're living in a cave with no sexual thoughts. I don't know. Um, you can try, but the common things that happen, kind of the, the negative things are your energy gets stuck because you're not truly circulating it. Um, <clears throat> you feel stuck, you feel frustrated, irritable, you know, but again, my general guideline rule of center of steam retention is if you feel good, if you feel balanced, keep going. And I, and I stand by it. Mayna Mayank Singh says, hello, Jonathan, what are your thoughts on Kundalini and microcosmic orbit? Microcosmic orbit is a pathway in the body. It's an energy pathway up the back of the body, down the front. Kundalini is a type of energy, you know, lies dormant at the spine. Um, but I believe the Kundalini, when it rises, is going through the Chiang Mai, the central channel, which is not the microcosmic orbit. It's it's within the microcosmic orbits. Is, it's kind of this container around the Chiang Mai or the Sushumna. And so um, I don't believe you can breathe the Kundalini through the microcosmic orbit, but I could be wrong, you know. But yeah, my experiences with Kundalini is like, oh, that's a that's a central channel experience for sure. It's not a micro. It's not a it's not a governor vessel Yang Chi experience. It's a fucking multi dimensional vertical connection type of experience. It's a different quality, you know. These different energy channels when you 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 know work with them a lot over the years you start to to understand that okay what's what's front channel back channel thrusting channels arm and leg channels belt channel ooh eight extraordinary meridians baby which one is it you start to feel the little flavors of the different energy centers you're working with cookie crone says how often do you fast what's your eating window um i just do intermittent fasting what has it been recently for a while, it was like a six-hour window, sometimes even like five-hour window. But recently, I've been a little more lenient because I'm at more of a bulking phase in my weight training. So I'm eating more calories, which means you know I don't like to stuff in <laughs> two 1,500-calorie meals in a day. So I think I'm still eating in like an eight. I, I, I've, I haven't been as concerned with it recently, but usually I'm eating between like one and, and eight or so. So uh, like a seven or eight-hour eating window usually. Nothing too crazy. <laughs> Jim Anderson says, talk about sunning and icing balls. My two favorite things in the world, sunning my balls and icing them or icing them and then, or no, no, yeah, you sun them and then you ice them, right? Uh, very, very, very beneficial for your sexual vitality. Icing your balls, our testicles need to be cool. They're meant to be cooler than the rest of the body. There's a reason they hang off and like they hang low. And when you're wearing underwear, briefs, boxer briefs, and they're like st stuck up against your body or like tight pants, they're getting warmer than they should be. And it's killing your sperm. It's hurting your testosterone production. It's no good. It's castrating you. Well, slightly, subtly, right? A lot of men who have fertility issues, this is the cause. So icing your balls, you know, if, if I didn't have to, I wouldn't wear pants all day, <laughs> but society and things. So I wear these pants and they make my balls real hot and sweaty. So what do I do? I ice them every night before I go to bed, pretty much without fail. Um, often like, you know, throughout the day, I'll grab my ice. I just, I have one of those like cooler packs in my freezer. I just grab it out, stick it down my, stick it down my pants, ice my balls for, you know, a few minutes till they're fucking cold and all stuck up tight against my body. I'm like, we good. And uh, yeah, so ice your balls. Really, really good for your testosterone and uh, sperm production. Then sunning your balls. Most people are vitamin D deficient, not getting enough sunlight. We're, we're, we're programmed to be scared of the sun. You know, oh, it causes cancer. It'll it damage your skin, all these things. Mostly bullshit. Uh, there's, there's more to that. But basically sun, I mean, sun is life. <laughs> the plants, they grow from the sun. Helios. So there's studies that show, well, first of all, vitamin D, which you get from sunlight. That's the best form of vitamin D is getting sun on your skin. That is essential for hormones. If you have low vitamin D, you're going to have probably lower testosterone. So you get your vitamin D from the sun so that your D is uh, extra deed. You know what I'm saying? Specifically though, there's studies that have shown that sunlight on, on your balls, on the genitals, in, uh, can increase testosterone levels up to 
I personally notice that when I get full body sun, I just feel more juicy. But the thing is, is your balls get pretty hot when you're in the summer sun. So ice them afterwards. Boom. Like people often say, oh, it's contradictory, Jonathan, icing your balls and put it in the sun. Like, bruh, it's two completely different things. You're not putting in the sun because you want them hot. You're getting the UV. You're getting the, the life force of the sun. Then you cool them off with some ice. All right. I am a Blanco says, what are the practices to reach the levels where you can orgasm without ejaculating? Basically being able to breathe deeply, keep your pelvic floor relaxed and, and circulate allow the sexual arousal to move through your body instead of just at your genitals. And I have many trainings on that. <clears throat> on my YouTube channel, go to my sexual Kung Fu exercises playlist. And if you want, you know, the, I was talking earlier about like the organized trainings I have on this stuff on my, my courses, a really good starting point is sexual Kung Fu workout. The next point, like a full on kind of training in this stuff will be male sexual mastery course. All right, guys, I'm kind of wrapping up here. I'm going to pick just a couple more questions to answer. All right, so here's two two questions, basically very, very fitting, the same thing. Um basically okay so mp cheats says these days i will occasionally have wet dreams except my body has trained itself to hold them in and retrograde ejaculation way more discreet yeah it is than fucking blasting sticky sheets right that's the worst thing it's you know i've been doing semen retention for 10 years <clears throat> i've pretty much um eliminated wet dreams but every now and then you know maybe i like i allow myself to get you know careless at night. It's too hot in the room. I have too much blanket on me. And you wake up with that. First of all, it's always weird. Like it's always just like really weird dreams. It's usually not like, oh yeah, super hot sex in my dream. It's always, it's often just like something really fucking weird. Like I, I can't even give specific examples. Like it might be like, it's, I don't know. It's it, <laughs> like, I'm standing there and I'm in a room full of, with someone and all of a sudden I'm ejaculating or something like this. It, it's uncomfortable. And then you wake up and you're like, fuck, here it's going. And it's like, ah, you know, and then your sheets are just fucking low. Cause you know, I'm like, fuck, I'm going to ejaculate in six weeks. That's a big fucking load all over my sheets. I think I've told you guys a story of <clears throat> my $50 wet dream. <laughs> I was at this Airbnb in, uh, in Phoenix. This, this was several years ago. And um, actually my partner and I had some pretty, you know, some pretty sexy sex. And I had looking back on it, I had allowed myself to get a bit too close to the point of no return, built up a lot of tension in my pelvic floor, which I hadn't properly resolved. Just went right to sleep, woke up with a big fucking load in the bed. We, <laughs> I get a message from the Airbnb host, like, I'm going to have to charge you guys for the, the comforter in the bed. I don't know if you, it, it seems like you spilled a milkshake or a smoothie in the bed <laughs> and we couldn't get it out. <laughs> that wet dream cost me $50. <clears throat> oh, but the, yes, yeah, so the answer to the question. <clears throat> um, basically another person's asking, will it be harmful to have retrograde ejaculation long-term? I suspect not because I know people who've done this, like they, they're like, oh, this is the sexual Kung Fu non-ejaculatory practice, fucking retrograde ejaculation. I'm like, yeah, sure, bro. You're, it's, it's no different. I'm like, damn, imagine like, imagine I've been doing this for 10 years and I'm just teaching you to have a retrograde ejaculation. And I'm like, oh, I'm practicing the same retention. I haven't ejaculated in 10 years. I knew a dude who was doing exactly that. I was like, fuck, bro. Um, <clears throat> but obviously didn't cause them problems i have heard of some people though mostly for the million dollar point where like they ruptured something pressing really fucking hard and they like were ejaculating out blood or something so the million dollar point is not something i recommend anymore but yeah retrograde ejaculation i don't know it, it's just redirecting the semen into your bladder <clears throat> i often felt like a bit of congestion after doing it so i don't recommend it and there's really no benefit to it because 
you're losing the semen anyway. You're urinating it out afterwards. So to me, it's like, what's the point? Might as well just, you know, bust it fully if you're going to do that anyway. <clears throat> Slim Diesel says, how many hours sleep are you getting per night? Uh, my most ideal is eight. Um, you know, some nights I, I can easily get away with six or seven, but I feel best when I get eight hours, you know, slept a solid eight hours last night, night before, you know, like six hours, but yeah, usually, usually seven to eight hours. Yeah. Phil Brad says, question, can you use wet dreams to help you sleep at night? Um, for me personally, whenever I've had a wet dream, I actually usually feel quite energized afterwards and have trouble going back to sleep. Yeah. So not for me. Coffee and semen retention. I mean, coffee with or without semen retention is about the same. <clears throat> the effect it has is that it, um, it's, it really, it stimulates your adrenals to release cortisol and adrenaline and you experience that as like oh i feel more energized yeah because you're in fight or flight state now right and it's 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 tapping your reserves your reserve energy so it's like spending from your bank account to have to uh, to make it seem like you have more now um and and for a lot of people it depends on your constitution like for a lot of people like a cup of coffee a day is gonna be fine for them for me personally though I can't really do caffeine at all. It just really tanks my adrenal energy, my kidney energy, my sexual vitality, therefore. So, you know, overall, if your goal of semen retention is to increase your sexual vitality, uh, caffeine could be hurting that. Depends on your constitution. If you need a cup of coffee to get going in the morning, you definitely have burnt adrenals. Human says, I get constipation on semen retention. Any tips? Make sure you're getting plenty of fiber in your diet. Um, avoiding stress. Don't, you know, spending too much time sitting down is going to be not so good. Well, belly massage, massage, chine song. I mean, if it's only happening during semen retention, it could be a sign of stagnant energy, you know, kind of stagnant, lower burner energy. So circulation exercises are essential as well. Soul Flame says, question, I read that doing the microcosmic orbit isn't recommended, but just clearing blocks is better. A bit like carving the trench as the water will flow on its own. What do you think? I mean, I've been doing microcosmic orbit for, I've been doing microcosmic orbit for 10 years, son. Um, and I actually had a period of my training. <clears throat> this was when I was getting into a certain system that was really really focused on just Dantian building. We're just build the Dantian, just build the Dantian. Don't fucking waste it by circulating through the orbit. Just build more in the Dantian. So that was my main focus. And I was doing much less microcosmic orbit in, I think it was about a year or so that I was really focused on that. My Dantian energy got fucking strong. It was like, you know, it, and I, I still have, I still am benefiting from that period of intense Dantian cultivation. But I noticed that I felt a lot more stagnant, like just kind of like, uh, just very stagnant. Whereas once I started doing a lot more, you know, my kind of normal microcosmic orbit circulation, I felt much more like, ah, much more, um, just flowing, creative. I felt very balanced by it. So I don't, I don't necessarily think it's true. It could be true for some people. This is the thing. Our constitutions are, everyone has a different constitution. Everyone has a different energetic infrastructure, different issues, tendencies. So there's no, like, I'm always cautious when people are like, no, ever, ever do this. You should only do this thing. Uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's, it's going to be different for everyone. And again, the, and, and I think a very important thing here is specifically in regards to the sexual energy movement. I almost guarantee that men practicing the sexual Kung Fu exercises after habits of, you know, just ejaculating the porn for years, they're not going to get their sexual energy to rise up the spine without some strong, uh, intention, yi, guiding it with the mind because it's, it has a strong pathway to go out the body. That's the net. That's the point of least resistance for it. So you have to recreate that by really strengthening that orbit, orbit pathway. That's been my experience. I know it's, it's easy to like, the, the, people say a lot of things. There's, there's a lot of teachers out there, a lot of great teachers. And so, I mean, some of my teachers, they say things I'm like, yeah, that's bullshit. I know that that's bullshit. And so I, I don't need to kind of put that, take that, that baggage on myself. So it's like, ultimately 
throughout your, obviously in the beginning, you don't really know anything. You're like, well, fuck, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So I got to do what my teacher says. And that is what it is. But eventually there comes a point where you have to start experimenting. Like, is this true? What if I'm at this, like for me, it's kind of always been the case for me, but I have a very kind of rebellious nature where when someone says not to do something, it makes me want to do it more. So like I've had some teachers where they're like, never do this. And I do it just because I'm like, is this true? And then I'm like, no, it's a bunch of bullshit. So I don't know. You got to find your own path. You know what I'm saying? Sun Diesel says, I wake up after four hours, less sleep needed on retention. I mean, I experienced that where I thought I was needing less sleep. Like there's a period where I was sleeping like, yeah, I was sleeping like five hours a night. Like, yeah, so, uh. what it usually is, is you're excessively sympathetic. Your, your fight or flight response is activated. Your adrenals are pumping 24 um, seven. Something that can't happen when you're young, cheese out of balance, which is something that can't happen on seam retention without balancing exercises. And, but after a period of time, you start to get burnt the fuck out. I almost guarantee that you're not getting enough sleep. Unless you have like a really, really strong meditation and stillness practice, four hours of sleep is, you're probably going to see some hormonal declines, you know, at some point. So be careful about that. Uh, male deer exercise. I've, I've, I've never been very impressed with it personally. Like it's supposed to be a powerful sexual vitality exercise where you basically grab your balls with one hand and you rub your belly with the other. And I've done it just because people said it was great, but maybe I should try it again. I mean, I did it every day religiously for like uh, maybe until a year or two ago. So for like eight years and then I stopped doing it because it's like, I don't know if it's really doing much. There's other practices I do, which I found much more effective for building sexual vitality. I suspect there's kind of an internal energetic component that's missing from it. But uh, who knows? Okay, last two questions. I am here. It says, I can't f seem to find a balance between building sexual energy and falling into sex porn addiction. Well, this comes down to... <clears throat> getting into an embodied experience of sex versus a visual experience of sex. We've been trained to be very visually oriented as men through porn. And so what I, what I recommend you do is to get out of this like imagery, body parts in, in your eyes and in your mind and into feeling your body. This was a huge shift in my practice where I was like, oh, if I just like maybe use a bit of fantasy just to get aroused in the first place. But once you're there, just focus completely on building arousal just through body sensation alone. And something I'm really realizing now is that because this is a common thing men ask me about is like, I just don't feel aroused when I'm by myself without porn or whatever. I think it partially is maybe a bit of disruption of your arousal system from um, <clears throat> porn and how it fucks up your dopamine circuit and your arousal re response. And it can also be a bit of like um, imbalanced hormones, which many, many men have, many men have low testosterone and, and, uh, a sign of low testosterone is low libido, just not feeling horny basically. So there can be many things there. Check out my video on, uh, ult my esoteric sexual vitality optimization guide on YouTube, but also transitioning into just pure feeling sense of, of, uh, sex pleasure connecting with your heart space. It's a process. Gourmet de Caso says, how can I know if I have pelvic floor tension? Is there any methods to know it? Well, here's a, a giveaway is, is during sexual stimulation, you're masturbating or having sex. When your penis is stimulated, if you feel like your, your pelvic floor is squeezing, like you're doing a Kegel, even like just a little bit, like slightly from that, it means you have a, a, a tension pattern in your pelvic floor. Most men do though. So if like basically sexual control is an issue at all. Like if you, uh, if you have difficulty controlling ejaculation, likely pelvic floor, pelvic floor tension. Okay, guys, I'm out. Thanks everyone for joining. Good to see you guys. Thanks for bringing your questions, bringing your energy, your presence. Good to connect with you guys. And again, uh, if you're interested in the, 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 when I open the online masculine awakening men's circle to the public, 
you want to join that, there's a wait list in this YouTube video description. There's a link in my Instagram bio, I think, as well. So, all right, take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Slim Diesel says, what's your max time holding a Kegel? I haven't done a Kegel in over two years. Kegels destroy your pelvic floor for a lot of people. But back in the day, I used to do them for like five minutes at a time or some shit. Like I was doing ridiculous Kegel holds. All right. See you guys. Boom. Take it easy.